begin with our call to worship. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. Our opening hymn is Blessed Are They. i 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our Kyrie is Kyrie eleison from setting eight. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you and our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us for the from the foundation of the world. Amen. We sing now our canticle of praise, Beauty from Brokenness. Shelter for 
change our lives, cures for their ills, work for the craftsmen, train for their skills, land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak, voices to plead the cause of those who can't speak. of Christ be with you all. Let us take a moment to share that peace together. We sing now our canticle of peace, day by day.
strength to serve and wisdom to obey. I will seek your loving will to guide me o'er the paths I struggle day by day. I will fear no evil on the morrow. I will trust in your enduring grace. Save your help. Life's pain and sorrow Till in glory I behold your face Oh, what joy to know that you are near me When my burdens grow too great to bear Oh, what joy to know that you will hear me Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in the lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Welcome, everyone. I hope that you had a good week. Today, we celebrate All Saints Sunday. And All Saints Sunday is always November the 1st, although we often have to celebrate on the closest Sunday. But today, if you're watching it on Sunday, is November 1st and is actually All Saints Sunday. So normally I'd ask you, what do we do on All Saints Sunday? Well, as you can see, we've lit all kinds of candles here. And what we do on All Saints Sunday is that we remember those who have, we have lost, especially during the last year. But we often will light a candle, not just though for the people that who, who have died this past year, but people who we've known and loved and lost throughout our life. So maybe there's a grandma or a grandpa or an aunt or an uncle or a friend or somebody who meant a lot to you that if you were here, you would put a candle for them. So just imagine that we put these candles out here on your behalf. So pick one of these candles or a few of them and, and make them your candle. Say that candle was lit for this person and that candle was lit for that person. Because it's important to remember them. God has given these individuals into our life for a reason. They are in our life so that we can better know what it means to love God and to serve the world. And these individuals are often people who are really good at doing both. They're really good at, at uh, showing us what a relationship with God looks like. And they're also really good about being kind and serving the people around them. So we light a candle like this because not only are we remembering them through these candles, but we're also acknowledging that they were lights for us. They were, they were lights that reflected God's love in the world just like we were called to do. Maybe one day when we're, when we're gone and our children or our grandchildren or our great-grandchildren light a candle, maybe they'll remember us and maybe we can be a light for somebody in our life. Maybe we can be that person who a grandchild or a great-grandchild or a friend or whatever, whoever it might have been, will look back and say, hey, so-and-so was this wonderful person who helped me to know God and to serve the world in ways that I never really understood until I got to know them and they taught me and they showed me through their life. And maybe one day they'll put a candle there for us too and for you, for all of us. But meanwhile, we do remember the light. And it's important that the Christ light is behind it too because that Christ light is the light that these lights reflected. That's the light that no darkness can overcome. The light of life, of love, of hope, mercy, grace, forgiveness, 
all the very best things that we associate with God, we also think of when we think of the Christ light. And it's that which they reflected, those we remember, and it's that which we are called to reflect. So even if you can't be here to light a candle, and even if these candles weren't necessarily lit for the person you want to remember, although they certainly can if you want it, I would ask, suggest that you find a time and place to light a candle in remembrance of someone you loved and lost, somebody who meant so very much to you. Because by doing so, you can keep their memory alive and everything they taught you will also be kept alive. All of the ways in which they express the very best, you can remember every single time you light a candle and you sit down and remember them and all the things they meant to you. So, All Saints Sunday, is a good time for remembrance. It can be a sad time too, I, I know that as well. We'd love for them to still be with us, but we trust that they're with God. And so a sad time, a joyous time because of everything they meant to us, but above all God's time, because in all things, all things live and breathe and have their moment in God's love. And for that we say thanks be to God, amen. First reading. Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all the tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honour, and power and might. Be our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white? Where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, there, These are the many who have come out from the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing now our next hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Oh, 
second reading, 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that we did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we know is this, when he is revealed, we will like him, for, he, for we will see in him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is ours. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. We sing now our gospel acclamation, Shall We Gather at the River? Gospel reading today is taken from St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. They, and then they began. I'm going to start again. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't stop it. Don't stop it. Did you stop it? Thank you. Just leave it. I can cut this. It's fine. Okay, this is still running, so I need to go. Our gospel reading today is from, taken from St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. 
O Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I don't know if there has ever been a year where I have been more acutely aware of how fragile we are than this year. COVID-19 has made it very apparent that a little microscopic virus has the power to threaten not just our mortal existence, but the very foundation upon which our society is built. We have quickly begun to realize that to protect the most vulnerable in our society and to not exceed the capabilities of our healthcare system comes at an extensive economic cost. On the other hand, to push the economy ahead of health concerns leaves a devastating wake in the path of this slippery virus. It becomes an agonizing decision because no matter the direction a decision takes, people will suffer and there will be consequences. One little virus and our lives grind to a halt and then get flipped right upside down. It is a hard lesson to come face to face with for society which has felt itself invincible. North American society has become or has been guilty for a long time in believing that it is the very pinnacle of human society. We are where the buck stops, we feel, and the rest of the world should strive to become like us if they truly want to have the good life. I'm not going to get into the incredible arrogance at work in that belief, but that ideal has been shown to be rather untenable in the face of the global pandemic. Our economy is not strong enough to ride its way through this current global situation, and it is leaving a lot of people behind. That is why so many are being sacrificed on the altar of the global economic picture. Many feel, to, many feel that if we don't, there, won't be, there may not be anything to, go, to return to. To put it mildly, our mortality is being exposed, and not just our own personal mortality, but also the mortality of our entire way of life. The cracks are showing. The weaknesses are being exposed, and that makes a very scary situation even worse. On this All Saints Sunday celebration, the idea of saying goodbye to our loved ones and friends, some of whom we will name shortly and others whom we will, who we will mourn for more privately, takes on a som more somber feel than usual. We don't know what else we are saying goodbye to. Are we, as we light a candle and ring a chime for each name lost to us, also mourning for the loss of all that once was? It is a sobering thought, but a hard one not to entertain on some level. Perhaps the world we have known is truly gone. What will that mean for the world going forward? What will life look like when we are lighting candles and offering the names of those we have lost next year? I don't think any of us can ever even hazard a guess. It seems like every guess so far has been wrong anyway, and it can feel grim and overwhelming. It certainly does to me. That has really hit home over the last few weeks. Since school has started, we have been in some form of isolation four different times. Work and schoolwork was completed, and I am happy to say that no one was murdered. I say that jokingly, I think. But I was, it was worrisome for many reasons. It has been nice to be back for in-person services, but it feels strange with all the changes that have taken place. And with the numbers surging of late here in Alberta, it feels like all the sacrifices of the early months of the pandemic have been undone. I have felt a little overwhelmed and perhaps like I have hit something of a wall. Nothing is quite right. And I wonder every time we make plans or every time there is some big event happening as to whether it will even happen or whether something like the need to isolate will come along to derail everything. Maybe the Christians of old felt something similar to this when they began experiencing persecution at the hands of the Romans and exclusion from the Jewish community from which many of them came. The very idea of being a Christian had already changed so much in their lives and now they were faced with standing alone against the world's mightiest empire without even a mother community to, back, to fall back on. It would have been incredibly hard. The book of Revelation was written to address such a situation. The early Christians were experiencing persecution and it was becoming easier and easier to slip back into old patterns of belief. 
The whole point of the book is to encourage and give strength to the believers who are in the trenches of everyday life. As scary as that book can sound to modern readers, it was meant as a way to offer hope and to remind believers that in the end, God would be victorious, even over the seemingly endless powers of Rome. And passages like the one we have in our reading today offer a glimpse of this hope, specifically that little slice of hope which is a picture of God's kingdom. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. In the end, God's kingdom is a place where even our basest moral reality, mortal realities, such as hunger and thirst, hold no power over us. God triumphs even over the mortality of our own existence. Even death, as Paul says, has lost its sting. For those suffering persecution, this was wonderful news. They could hold on. They could have hope. Because God would triumph. This passage and others like it show just what, it, what was in store for them in God. Life, and life abundant, which could not be taken from them even in the face of an empire. God was greater. It is to that same God that we have always entrusted our own loved ones when we say goodbye to them. The pastor speaks similar words of hope in that moment to what we find in Revelation. God will be triumphant. God's kingdom will come. God's will be done. We pray those words every time we pray the Lord's Prayer. We entrust our loved ones this day, All Saints Day and every day, to the grace and love of God. The trick, and something we too often forget, is that we have to entrust ourselves to the same love and care. If we can trust that our loved ones rest in the love of God, and if we know from history that God prevails in the life of the faithful, as is evidenced in the life of the martyrs and the saints over the course of human history, then we should be able to entrust ourselves as well. Yet that becomes a sticking point for a lot of us. Too often, the fear and sorrow of the moment win out, and instead of trusting in God, we find ourselves feeling farther from God. Yet that same hope which we entrust our loved ones to, and which kept the many generations of the faithful going, is ours too. But can we see that? Can we willingly allow ourselves to trust in God in the face of so much fear in this world of ours? It isn't easy, but it is life. For the way of fear is death, absolute and certain death. Our mortality is never more exposed than when we let fear rule our hearts. Then every worry, every pain, whether physical or emotional, is amplified many times over, and we can feel the darkness of the world close in. Fear, as it says in one of my favorite books, is the mind killer. But in God, we find a different way forward, a way of hope, a way of life. It is not a way that ignores the problems we face, but challenges them directly. COVID-19 has exposed many inequalities. So let us face them and make this world a better place, a place that God has always called us to work for. Our fear, our mortality, even our own selves do not have to be our, our undoing. Rather, we can make of this world, our lives in the future, something that begins to resemble the place of life God always intended. And God will be there every step of the way, helping us, empowering us, and loving us. We may be saying goodbye to those we have loved and lost today, and on some level we may be saying goodbye to the life we once knew. But in God's love, the next step does not have to be into greater darkness. Instead, it can be into God's light, God's very life, a place where we may in fact begin to see just what Revelation speaks about. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. 
The sun will not strike them, nor, or, nor any scorching heat. The Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Amen. We sing now our hymn of the day for all the saints. We continue with our affirmation of faith. In Christ, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Let us give thanks to God for all the saints of our lives and the witness they have shared with us, even as we continue to walk the journey of faith and make our way to the glory that God is preparing for all of us. Let us pray. Eternal God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, we praise you for the saints of all times and places who have walked the road of faith before us and beside us, for their witness to your love and their commitment to your justice, for their trust in your mercy regardless of the circumstance, we give you thanks and praise. God of all creation, we praise you for all your servants who have witnessed to your truth, who have shown us your love, who have inspired us to have hope by their example of faith, hope, and love. Remind us of your calling to join in making your new creation real in this world and the next. God of grace and peace, we praise you for women and men and children who reflect your love into our world. Guide us to continue their faithful work as we too walk in the light of your love. God of all saints, today we remember especially the saints from among this community who have departed our company over the last year. We thank you for the faithful witness. We remember Irene Middlestad. Bill Blaschka. Linda Cox. Linda Balzer. Joe Brand. Ed Handworker. Arthur Wunsch. Pauline Litke. For their courage amid strife and their hope in the face of death, we remember so many other saints who have walked this road with us, whom we name before you aloud or in silence. Continue to inspire us by their faithful witness that we too might join in bringing your justice, mercy, and peace to our world. Eternal God, as we walk this pilgrim way, make our faith firm, our hope clear, and our love pure, that we might join the saints of all the ages in praise eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God and community, holy and one, may we never be apart from you, even as we pray as we are taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
We sing our offertory hymn, Holy Ground. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant, amen. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. We sing our canticle of thanksgiving. O oh, sing to the Lord. Receive the blessing. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. I'd like to thank everybody for their contributions this week. Thank you for Susan for being our reader, for Lisa for putting our service together, for Lois having played as she usually does in such a wonderful way, and for uh, Dia helping me out with filming uh, this week. Uh, our in-person services continue, of course, even with the new restrictions. Um, we're at, currently, at least, exempt from those, uh, those restrictions. We'll see what the next few weeks bring. But for right now, although province wide, or at least in the Edmonton area and Calgary area, it's down to 15 people, that doesn't apply to things like a church or a restaurant or theater, that kind of thing. So we are still going, and hopefully we'll be able to maintain that through the weeks and months to come. Bless, I hope everybody has a blessed All Saints Sunday as you celebrate all those in your life who have had a real, uh, a real, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Who's, who have really meant something to you and have really 
uh, helped form the person you are. Uh, we have many of those in our life, and I, I hope that you'll take a moment this, this All Saints Sunday to remember them and to remember the kind of love that they share, they shared with you, and also that God is with us, that God, um, God brought these people into our life, but God also is there in our life no matter what, that God is the light. So remember that too as we walk through this time that has been difficult of late again, and I think we just need to be reminded again, God is our light, our life, and in God there is hope. So we'll see you next week. I'll talk to you later. We sing now our sending song, Trees of the Field. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.